Good morning. You guys have no idea what you're in for, do you? I like it like that. Yeah, so as Angie said, my background is, is very much in the, the corporate space. And how many of you heard of Zappos before? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's really a culture of happiness. And what's interesting about happiness is a lot of times people think that it's on this scale of happiness versus unhappiness. But I've experienced in life you can have a lot of both. Like it's not whether you're happy or unhappy. So as I said, I come from this corporate background. I've I helped Google with the transition to go from an engineering culture to a um, customer service oriented culture. Right now I'm working with GE to help them go from being the most industrialized company in the world to being the most digitized company in the world. And I really know nothing about those things. But what I found that I've learned through my journeys that I'm going to share a little bit with you about is that it's about the story, that it's about the journey, that it's about the experiences, the characters. And what I decided to do for this is to do something I've never done before, which is to share with you a little bit about my story. Because usually I'm sharing so much about all these other companies' stories. And, you know, I worked in a culture of so much happiness, and people associate with me with being one of the happiest people they know. And my mom said I was like that from the beginning. She called me the Buddha baby because uh, two weeks after being born, I just slept through the night entirely. And I just suddenly had teeth. I never even had pain from, from, from teething. And I was happy. And yet, all this happiness I had within me, I also had an experience that created a total shift, which was when I was three years old, happy through preschool, a friend of mine died. And suddenly, I was in this position to completely question reality. Like, what is it? What is this life? What happens afterward? And with that came also a deep level of anxiety of that we could go any minute. And that's true. And what that created in me was this desire to have all kinds of new experiences because who knows how much time we have left. And at the same time, this, this anxiety that was with me through a lot of my life. In fact, when I was eight years old, my mom took me to the doctor because I was having chest pains and they couldn't figure out anything that it was except for stress. And so on one side, I had this, this growing up with a lot of anxiety and fear. And at the same time, I had one of the happiest upbringings ever. I remember some of my happiest moments were Saturday mornings. You know, when you got to just not pay attention to the alarm, go downstairs for Saturday morning cartoons. You remember those? And my mom served us not cereal, but chocolate chip pancakes, buttermilk, with butter between each layer so good. And my brother and I got to create our own worlds. We would pretend we were in movies and TV shows. And we would pretend the house was the set. And we would play with Legos and create our own movies. And so when I went to college, especially leaving in LA where everything was movies, everything was the film industry, I decided I want to be a film major. I picked out a great film school, went there, and then making a film, actually having the experience of making a film, I had a totally new thought. Because you know, you ever have that thing where you're like, I'm going to do something and then you do it and it's completely different than you expected? <laughs> yeah. So I realized it is a one big pain in the butt to make a film. And I didn't want to spend my, my life experiencing a pain in the butt. I didn't want to make movies. <laughs> I wanted my life to be a movie. I wanted to experience all these things. I wanted to go on great adventures. I wanted to get the girl. I wanted to save the world. And it, it spurred this, this life that I've had where I've changed careers like every four years. I've been a bartender, a waiter, directed an online community, ran a fashion label, had a magazine, developed a web company. 
every few years just changing lives, changing stories, lived in seven different cities. But at the same time, underneath this was that driving anxiety that I've had. This, this, this driving sense of I've got to make the most of this now. And I also experienced this, especially in that moment, after I realized that I wasn't there for film school. It changed my whole outlook, which created a great life, but in that moment, it sunk me into a deep depression. I didn't even know what depression was. I just found that I couldn't really get out of bed. I just didn't want to. And I also found that I would be walking down the hall. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but you think everything's okay, but one person says, how are you? In a really genuine way, and all these tears just start flowing out of nowhere. <laughs> I, it's like I didn't know what was happening to me. And so I would go on and off into these periods of anxiety, on and off different medications and pills. I would go through this cycle where I would feel great, and of course, oh, think life is fantastic now, and I'd go off the pills and then sink back down. And I would keep cycling until I saw a guy named Dr. Roman, Norman Rosenthal. And he's the guy who wrote the book on SAD, Seasonal Affectational Disorder, a lot of other big books. He ended up writing a great book on Transcendental Meditation. And I saw him, and I said, I'd like you to help me with my anxiety and my depression. He's taking a look at me. He says, are you ADD? And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm here for anxiety and depression, not ADD. I'm, I'm fine. He said, let's just take this test. And I fought him on it. I said, no, no, no. I'm, I'm. He said, just humor me. And I took this test on ADD. He, t he takes it. He starts scoring it out. He says, shows me the score, flips it around. He goes, you are off the charts, ADD. I was looking at this in shock. I just never identified with this at all. And he said, this confirms my theory. What, what theory? And he said, well, I don't actually believe you're depressed or even anxious. He says, I see you as a guy who's got a lot of big ideas, a lot to do, and, and you get overwhelmed by that because you're not getting them done. And because you're not getting all these, these ideas done, you're getting really anxious. And you use that anxious energy to try to push through. It's not working for you because you don't have the techniques to deal with it. And when you run out of that energy, you get depressed. So let's just take it on at where it's at. And started working on that, at first through medication, then through other techniques, and I got really focused. And then I, I, I realized I had this kind of awakening moment where I thought, oh, I'm noticing that my depression feels really rooted in the past, like what I thought it would be. I thought I would be going to film school. I thought I had this other story, and that was where my feelings of depression were connected. And the anxiety came from the future of thinking, I've got to get this all done now. I've got to get all these ideas done. I want to have all these different lives and careers because we could die at any moment. But if I'm totally present in the moment, both those things just disappear. There's just this moment. And if I can live there, if I can be there, then, then I can be truly happy. And so this idea came to me, another idea. I call it the reverse time machine, because what does a time machine do? It takes you to the future, takes you to the past, right? So a reverse time machine would take you to the present moment, get you to stop thinking about the future and regretting the past. So what I did was I created this. It's a watch that just says the word now. It doesn't work. This is the final prototype version here. At first, what I did was I just took, <laughs> I took regular watches, opened them up, break off the hands, slap the word now on it, and reseal them. I started to make them for people. I made them for, for friends, and they went crazy over them. So I thought, okay, there's a business here, right? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> So I start making these, and I, I actually get the intellectual property on it, the trademark for the Now watch. And we start making all these watches, other jewelry lines, etc. I get friends involved, investors. 
And then one day, I get this letter in the mail, no return address, FedEx to me. And I just feel it. It's one of those like intuitive psychic moments, right? And I just, I just hold it. And I'm like, I'm getting sued. <laughs> that's, I know that's what's happening. I open it up. It's totally a letter about a lawsuit. What happened was, talk about anybody can sue for anything. Even though I had a trademark on this, another company said my trademark infringed on their trademark because they own the word now on real watches. I said, guys, this is technically a bracelet. This, this doesn't tell time. It just says now. It doesn't work. But they said, no, it doesn't matter. And it became a game of poker where after a while, my lawyer said, you know, you're going to have to spend three more years on this, a few hundred thousand dollars, and then maybe we'll win. And I cried uncle. Because at that point, I was not only losing, I was 80 grand in debt. Yeah, I bet it all on that. And so I was in this place that felt so dark I didn't know what to do because I had this psychology that I was under, as you could probably tell, that I could spend my way out of things. You know, that I could just um, figure out how to pay somebody to get me out of it. And now I was just so far under, I said, what am I going to do? And I thought, how did I get here? What went out of control? And I thought back to that ADD conversation with Norman. And I said, maybe it's my ADD that got here, and maybe that'll bring me back. And I started looking through my ADD books again, getting in touch with those techniques. And I found there was a 12-step for ADD. And I said, wait a minute. If there's a 12-step for ADD, there must be a 12-step around money. And so I found there's something called Debtors Anonymous. You can join, and it's filled with people who are in my situation. So I went to a meeting, and th the idea that I had with this was just to go in there, make all my money back, get out of there. And I said, I'm, I'm only going to spend time with you guys as long as I have to, get my money and get out of here. And I was pretty cocky about it. But then I heard people's stories. And they would share about how these brilliant people would not only get themselves into debt, but then get out of it, be fine, and then go all the way back in. And I thought, whoa, this is something, this is that's a disease that's smarter than I am. I can't just assume I'm better than all these amazing people in the room. And it was really humbling. And I started to go to three meetings a week. I added an all-men's meeting because in the men's meeting, you can just let your guard down as breadwinners and, and just be really honest. I got a sponsor. I was, there was a guy who said he was 50 grand in debt. He had a JD, he had a business degree, and now he's working four hours a month making six figures with a six-figure salary. I said, you're my guy. <laughs> and it took years, but it was, it was incredible. It was, it was deeply humbling. I remember telling my friend Ken who was an Alcoholics Anonymous, I said, I'm in DA now, and I expected him to say, oh, I'm really sorry, that's terrible, this is happening. He said, awesome, congratulations. This is fantastic, it's gonna transform your life. And that was just this total reframe. I had this resistance, and yet letting myself go with it. Letting myself be surrounded by people who cared. And the ability and opportunity to help them as well. That's what got me through it. And this idea of, of, of resistance has come up a lot because with that anxiety came panic attacks. Has anybody ever had a panic attack? That, thank you for even sharing. It's brave to even admit it. Right? And to me, there's two kinds of panic attacks. There's one where you freak out. But then there's the other kind where you literally believe you are dying. And you know when you've had that when you're like me and you've gone to the hospital for it because you're that convinced and gone to the emergency room. And the first couple times I would, I would be there and um, I would, it would take so long that I would leave before being admitted because it would finally subside. But one time I was actually admitted and they ran the test, they said, no, you're fine. They gave me an Ativan, which made me worse. <laughs> Awful. And they said, they let me go. <laughs> and then in the mail, another envelope, five grand for that experience. 
And I started researching again and I found this program called Panic Away that shifted my whole idea about what anxiety is, what panic is, what resistance is. Because he said, look, when you've been through a panic attack, you know it's, it's not real. It's not happening and yet you're convinced in the moment. So the thing you have to do like in a poker game is call its bluff. Call its bluff. Because in this moment when I read this, I realized the opposite of resistance is not acceptance. The opposite of resistance is to welcome whatever's coming in. And he said the technique is when you're having that panic attack to say, bring it on. If your heart's beating out of control, say, kill me right now. Literally. Do it. You say you're going to kill me, kill me. You've got 30 seconds or I'm calling your bluff. And it's the last thing you want to do in that moment. But it works. And so I thought, okay, I've got to, I've got to do this next time. But panic attacks are like lightning. You don't know when they're going to strike. Except I did. I felt like uh, Doc from Back to the Future. You know, where he says, uh, we need 1.21 gigawatts. But you never know when a bolt of lightning is going to strike. And Marty's right there saying, yes, we do. And I did, be, I did because in flotation tanks, anybody heard of a flotation tank? So there's these sensory deprivation chambers that you don't see anything, you have earplugs in, you don't hear anything, and you're sitting on this salt water holding you up. And if you stay still, you can't feel anything. Some people find it the most relaxing thing in the world. It would send me straight into a panic attack. And so I knew I could find them there. And so I went there. First time I tried this, it didn't work <laughs> in the sense of I gave up. It was so bad. I got out of the tank, mid-panic attack, left. I was in such a bad space. When I drove out of there, I drove up one of those concrete uh, walls where you're not supposed to without the drive entering. And it, it bottomed out my car. I had to get my whole chassis fixed. <laughs> Again, that pain was just too much. I'm not. Next time, I'm staying in the tank. <laughs> and I went for three times a week for four weeks, each time facing it. And at first it was terrifying. And then it got to this place where I got this deep peace once I left it, let it happen. And what's interesting is by the end of the four weeks, I was in that tank and bored. Not peaceful, I was just like, what? Is, what? And the, this is the strangest part to me, is at the end of that four week experience, I missed my panic attacks. I missed them. I realized I was getting this surge of energy, this adrenaline, this feeling of being alive. And I thought, okay, now I'm not going to get that from this. But where else can I get that? Where can I get that consciously in my life? Where can I take on things that I've been afraid of and get that rush from that? And one of those things is what I'm going to be sharing with you about today. An experience that really shifted my life completely, that may shift yours as well. Everybody take a deep breath in. So what do you think? Zappo stuff or go into the experience? <laughs> so I'll just finish up the Zappo story and then I'm going to share with you what I came to share with you. It's because what I learned through this, through these experiences, are that if you notice, none of these things happened without experiences. They were all experiences. And what happened after that big depression that I went into, losing all my money, going into DA, people, people were really worried about me. Because while I was going to those meetings, I wasn't making any money, and I still could barely get out of bed. And my parents said, just get a job in marketing. Just do that. Why don't you just get up and do this? And I only wanted to do one thing. I just said to myself, the only thing I want to do is become 
a spinning instructor. <laughs> that was all that was clear. You ever have those moments where it's just, look, this is all I know. And all I knew was I wanted to be a spinning instructor. There's no money in that, by the way, at least back then. Now with SoulCycle, you can actually make, I think, close to six figures doing it because they created an experience of it. If you see what SoulCycle is, they took spinning these indoor bicycle classes and made it into this high-end $30 a class incredible experience, and they're killing it now. But back then, it was more like I had to pay people for the experience because I would spend so much time making these mixes, but I loved it because it combined being a DJ with being a coach, with exercising, I had so much fun. I didn't even tell people I was training to be a spinning instructor because I was embarrassed. I didn't want them to know. And I knew there, I didn't even know where this was going because there was no money in it. But an interesting thing happened is that it shifted me out of that depression by doing what I want right now. By saying, I don't care what other people think. I don't care what my parents think. I don't even care that it's not going to make me money. I just am feeling, I want to do this for me. And it got me so much energy that it shifted everything. And I started working again with my friend Dave Logan, author of Tribal Leadership. He said he wanted to market that book. And I got that book into the hands of Tony Shea, CEO of Zappos. He loved it. We started becoming friends. And Zappos is known for a great culture. And that's what made that connection. Because that company is all about being passionate and determined. And the only way I had access to that passion for culture, for people, I'd also been a life coach and a leadership coach. But the only way I was able to connect with that was through that experience of becoming a spin instructor. There's this expression that Steve Jobs has where he says that, Life only makes sense looking backwards that you can put the pieces together. But the only way to move forward is what we're feeling, is what we're experiencing, what we want for ourselves. And yet, what is it that comes up? Our resistance. Our resistance because we're scared. Our resistance maybe because we don't know. It comes in many forms. And what I developed for these seven years that Angie's been talking about is a way to get through that resistance. Is a way, sometimes you bust through it, sometimes it's real easy, sometimes it's just a letting go. And it's something I brought to share with you today. Are you interested to hear about it? Awesome, all right, let's do this. So as I said, I, I did film for a while and shot films like these at Zappos. And as I told you, in film school I had the realization that I didn't want to make movies, I wanted my life to be a movie. But I also had another insight about movies, which is that I wanted to actually reverse the filmmaking process. Because in film you take an idea and you make it into a movie. What if we could take a movie and make it real? Have you ever had that desire? You see a movie and you're like, man, I wish that was my life. Man, I wish those were my friends. Man, I wish I had that adventure. So I thought that. I took my favorite movie and said, what if this could be real? And I'm actually going to play for you the scene that inspired it. You might recognize it. A prison for your mind. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All 
I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Who remembers that? Raise your hand if you watched that. So I had this thought, why not? Why not a pill that wakes you up? Why not a pill that symbolizes you're ready? Everybody remember what happens after this scene? He has a full-on panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's something to these panic attacks. Maybe they're not so bad. So what I did was I decided that I would beta test the red pill. And I decided I wanted to find a community, a group of people who would go along with this. Anybody guess what group that would be who would go for this? What? Gen Con. I heard Comic Con yesterday. Comic Con. Yeah, we would. Anybody heard of this place? So this is a city of 80,000 people that comes up for a week and then disappears. It's called Burning Man. You may have heard of it. And it's a place where people live life as art for a week. Everything is created out of nothing. Out of your own mind, you get to live that. And you can just see beauty and art and people living life as art wherever you go. It's like living in a painting. You want to skate in the middle of the desert? You can do that. So I thought to myself, you know, people say to themselves at Burning Man, I want to be on a party on a yacht in the middle of the desert. Well, you know what? You can do that too. So why not the red pill from the Matrix? So what I did was I took red Tic Tacs and put them in prescription pill bottles. Took about 80 of these. I was freaking out as I took them through TSA. I was just, this is not going to look good. I promise to eat them, they're Tic Tacs. And then I took them to Burning Man. I said, I'm, I'm going to give this to people to wake them up. And I decided, okay, if I'm going to give this experimental drug to people, I got to go first. And I didn't take it because I was scared for a little bit. I said, I just put it aside. And I thought, I'm going to be of service. That's what people say to do. Be of service at Burning Man. That's how you have a great experience. And everything was denying it. People said, no, we're good. We're good. We're good. I'm just trying to help here. What's going on? Resistance, right? I let go of that and just went with it. I took the Tic Tac in my hand and I said, by taking this, I will know my reality. And I swallowed it and I had this instant new thought that came out of nowhere. It was like a voice in my head that said, you're just doing service because you want to be loved. So why not just go straight to love? And it shifted my whole mindset, shifted my whole experience, and I started taking other people through that experience. And they would have breakthroughs. And word got out, and people would, would ask me for this. And, and at one point, I was like Moses walking through the desert with these people behind me, trying to get to my camp to get these bottles of these pills. And then, oh, what happened after that was a psychologist called me up three weeks later. And she said, do you have any more of these bottles? And I said, the, the red Tic Tacs? Yeah. Why? She said, well, I started using them with my, my patients, and they're having these big breakthroughs that they haven't had before. So I'd love to get some more of them. It's like, okay, there's something to this now. So what I did is I up-leveled the experience, because I knew experiences have a big impact. So then I made this. I found some red vitamins, and I put them in these beautiful glass vials, and I posted on Facebook, if the red pill were real, would you take it? And put all these people in the Facebook group, and I said, okay, give me your address. I'm going to send it out. And we created this kit. This kit of the pills, of a journal, of the instructions. Put it in a box. Created the Facebook group. And to everyone I tasked them, I said, do the reality exercise, but then let's take it to the next level. Set an intention every day for it. And let's see if you get that one thing you want after 30 days. And so they did it. 
And some did it for weight loss, some did it out of love, some people did it to accomplish a goal, and one by one they said it's happening. And they would post in this Facebook group and say, I'm doing it. And he, here are a few of the things that they said, like, for me this served to keep my intention squarely in the forefront and thereby serve as a sort of focusing tool. Like when you make up your mind to buy a particular new car, you start seeing that model everywhere. Each day gets stronger and stronger. I'm finding distractions fading away much faster. In the past, I would get caught up in distractions for days or even weeks. Now I'm finding those distractions lessening as I'm more comfortable making quick decisions and moving on them. And then Holly, who's with us here today, she said, I moved into a neighborhood that I've always wanted to live in, restarted salsa dancing after six years, stopped watching TV and began reading, and the most notable thing is that I've started tapping back into my intuition. And so what happened across the board is I noticed regardless of the goal, it was almost like whatever was not relevant to what's important to them started to disappear. Because how many choices do we have these days? So many different channels, Facebook, all these distractions, all these ways to focus on what has nothing to do with what we really want. So this served as a focusing tool that said, no, I'm going to remember what it is I really want, what's, what's relevant for me, and let go whatever's not relevant. You with me so far? So how does this actually working? Like, what is happening? Because that was just a vitamin. There's nothing actually active in there. So what's working here is these are symbols and triggers. Symbols and triggers. So think about it this way. What is this? Money, $5 bill. Technically, it's a piece of ivory with some ink on it. That's what this literally is. But what happens? There's a lot of meaning that we put into this. You know, what happened at first was we traded it in gold, and then tickets that represent the gold, and now this is tied to no gold. And yet we all agree that it has value because we are in a trance together to say this means this. Even though it's a piece of paper, it's like we're playing a game. It's like Monopoly, our own real-world movie that we're in all together, where we agree that this means something. It's just a piece of paper. And this, what is this? It's a ring. Now technically it's a piece of metal and yet think about how much meaning is in this. A wedding ring, a commitment, an oath, something that gives people massive happiness or massive anxiety and pain. All through this little device of a little piece of metal. It reminds me, I did this exercise with, uh, with, with my coach, and he said, he, I, I did this visualization exercise where the, uh, I see a future version of myself. And in this visualization, he was giving me a ring, and it was like a wedding ring to myself. And he said, I want you to go out and get yourself a ring was really resistant, but when there's resistance, I look at that and I think, okay, I'm going to move past it. I did it. I found this ring that I really liked, but I thought it doesn't make sense, but I really liked it. And I felt all this anxiety with it. And once I finally bought it, though, for myself, it's like it all just disappeared. There was all this tension and anxiety, but on the other side of that commitment was a lot of ease. And so what's happening with pills is this is a pill with nothing in it. But as you know from the placebo effect, that pills can have a dramatic effect even if there's nothing in it. Why? Because it's a symbol that we all ascribe meaning to, that we've all taken, we've all had a pill change us. Even if you say, I don't believe in taking pills. If I hand you a cyanide pill and say, okay, don't believe in this, who's gonna take that? Is anybody actually gonna take that? No, because we all know pills are powerful. They have meaning to us. They change us. We have a cold, we take a pill. We want to be happy, we take a pill. We're feeling anxious and want to feel peace, we take a pill. We all know this. 
And so it has this deeper effect on us. The other part with it is that it's like making a commitment to that intention, whatever it is you want. Once you swallow it, you're on the other side. So I remember one of the first times I did it with myself with that new one with the vitamin was I said, by taking this pill, I am going to integrate my spirituality into everything I do. Sounds nice, right? I took the pill and I freaked out. Completely freaked out. Because suddenly all these thoughts came into my head. Oh my God, what if I have to be living alone in the desert? What if I have to be in an ashram? What are my parents going to think? Well, I'm going to make no money being spiritual all the time. Completely freaked out. But I didn't know all those fears were in there until I swallowed that pill. Because it's symbolically telling me, okay, now I'm on that adventure. It worked out great, but in that moment, it was fearful. So what happened next was, okay, this, this isn't the red pill. What is this? And what I did was I called up a supplement company. And I said, I want to make pills with nothing in them. I want to make pills with just a filler. They said, all right, we got brown rice powder, but you can't do that. That's a placebo. That's illegal. You can't sell placebos or make them. I said, okay, but I'm not, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to tell people exactly what this is, clear labeling everything. I said, we never heard that before. <laughs> so they said, okay, and we did a test run of 1,500 of them. And we made these purple pills. And moving forward with it, I said, okay, what, what is this? If it's not a red pill, it's a purple pill, which I named because remember in the Matrix, red pill wakes you up, but it takes you out of your life. Blue pill gives you back your life. What if you could wake up and be in your life at the same time? Blue and red makes purple. <laughs> so... A friend of mine, Scott, said, well, duh, if you want to know the name of the pill, say, I will know the name of the pill and take it. <laughs> Swallow it to learn the name of it. Set that intention that by taking it, you'll learn the name. So okay. So I said, by taking this pill, I will know its name. And I swallowed it. And I sat down. And all these names came forward in my head. It's like I didn't have to do anything. But all these names came in, and one was crystal clear. X pill. It was just that is it. It's the X pill. It's whatever you make it. And it was crazy because this time I got the trademark really quickly to get that. <laughs> <laughs> it was with ease. And what's crazier still is while I pill and all these others were selling for fifty thousand dollars or so, found an auction site that the search engine wasn't working on, and you had to know and specifically look for this URL. And I thought it was going to cost thousands of dollars right at the end of that auction, and instead got it for $12. Yeah. So beta test number two, the X pill. New bottle, new pill. So David sat down with David. This time, rather than doing it by Facebook, sending them out, we did them in person. And we sat down, Holly and I, with David and said, okay, what do you want? What do you want to use this pill for? And he said, I want to get rich. Like, all right. Well, why do you want to get rich? Always important to ask why. Did the deep work. He said, so I can leave a legacy. Okay, great. Well, what are you going to do to get rich? He said, you got to create a product. He's a coach. He wanted to create an audio product. And so he, cre he said, I want to create this. It took a lot of conversation at first to get this out of him. But then when he finally did, he held that pill in his hand, and he said, by taking this X pill, I will get this audio product done in two weeks. So OK, great. He swallowed it. He immediately starts sweating and shaking. There's nothing in the pill. I'm like, oh my god, does this have side effects? It's brown rice powder in there. But he's a coach, and he knew it, and he said, yeah, I get it. This is my resistance coming up. And so he moved through it. I, w I was so nervous for him to get it right that I, did, I waited two and a half weeks, and I finally called him up, and I said, did you get it done? And he said, I, I, I didn't get it done in two weeks. He said, I got it done in two days. I said, whoa. 
Rob sat down with him and he said, I want to have a photography business. Great. We did the why. Got in touch with the emotion. Why do you want this? What's that next step? He said, the next step is to create a photography website. I said, okay, when do you want it by? I told him the story about David. He said, I want it tomorrow. I'm like, really? <laughs> said, yes. I said, okay, great. And he's holding the pill in his hand. And that's when oftentimes this last minute resistance comes up and he's about to swallow it and he goes, but then I'll be tired tomorrow. And I said, well, let's build that into the pill. So he said, okay, by taking this X pill, I will get this photography website done by tomorrow and I'll be totally energized so I can serve my kids in class. Swallows it, goes home. He sends me a video of him on the way home singing and dancing in the car. He's just so excited. Next day, he has the website up. He sends me the URL. Day after that, he has two new clients. This happens fast. Brian, thinking about a trip to Japan for seven years, took the pill, boom, he's in Japan. <laughs> just to pull that trigger, that power, like we were saying before, like with DA, having people around you, focusing on what's relevant to you, making that commitment, symbolically, crossing that threshold. Danielle, she quit her job and started up a whole nonprofit. I was worried when I heard that. I thought this is going to come back and bite me in the butt. <laughs> I quit my job. You and your stupid pill. Now I got no money, but she's loving it. And Holly, as, as we mentioned, she, she found the love of her life through the pill. She said, I am going to be with the man I love. Swallow the pill. And what's interesting is the next thing that happened wasn't that she went on Match.com. The next thing was she just started clearing out things in her life that were irrelevant, started clearing out space, clearing out energy. In fact, my friend Renita, talking to her, she, she one day had everything she wanted in her life. And I said, what is it? You've taken every program I've seen out there. Which is the one that did it? And she said, you're not going to believe this. She said, this is all I did. All I did was write down everything I have to do and want to do and started with the things I was resisting the most and worked my way up from there. That's all I did differently. And now she got the man of her dreams, the kids she always wanted, and the jobs that she always wanted. Just by taking on those things she didn't want to take on, but knew she either had to or really, really wanted to. Well, what if you don't believe it? If you don't believe the pill will work, what do you think? Do you think it will work if, if you just don't believe this? It won't work? That's what I thought, too. <laughs> but I gave the pill to my friend David, and he said, okay, I'm going to use this to do more business development sales time. And he's holding the pill in his hand. And he says, he's holding it right there, and he's looking at me going, it's that last minute resistance part, right? And he says, I just got to tell you as your friend, I don't think this is going to work. Maybe I shouldn't take it. And I said, look, let's just do it anyway and see what happens. I said, okay. He swallows it. Two seconds after he swallows it, tears start flowing down his face. He's looking at me like this, saying, what is happening to me? I said, I don't know. <laughs> but something's happening. And you know what? He didn't end up doing that task, but he learned something new through it that he didn't know before about his resistance to it. So next stage was this. Created a full run of them. And this time, developed what I'm going to tell you about called the activation where we start with the inquiry with people. What do you want? Get dialed in on the intention and then initiate it with the pill. And the way that I did this was at this place called TLC, the Transformational Leadership Council. And at the Transformational Leadership Council, uh, it's run by Jack Canfield, who's right there, author of Chicken Soup for the Soul. And what we did was I told them this story that you're hearing right now. And then I invited somebody on stage to do it live and say, all right, I have no idea what's going to come. We're playing without a net. And this guy, Arjuna, head of one of the biggest coaching schools, comes up there. And at first he said, I, I want to use it to get my hair back. He's British. 
And I said, I, I don't think it's, that's definitely off-label use for this drug. I, I don't think it's going to work. Um, and he said, okay, well, I want to have no to-do list ever again. And the crowd freaks out. They go nuts because these are life coaches. They say, whoa, 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 hold on. Hold on here. Maybe you want a better to-do list. You want better things to do. He says, no, I want no to-do list. <laughs> and then he, the people said, well, maybe you want a better relationship with your to-do list. And he said, no, I want no to-do list. And then the crowd goes nuclear. Nuclear. They say, look, this guy Mike stands up, says, you know, careful what you wish for. This could really work. You could end up accused of a crime you didn't commit, go to jail, and have no to-do list for the rest of your life. <laughs> so after going full on nuclear, he says, I want no to-do list. And we were like, whoa, okay. And he swallowed it. I said, how are you feeling? He's like, great. And he said, you know, and he committed to it by March. And this was January. Next day at breakfast, he says to me, my to-do list is gone. It doesn't exist anymore. I'm like, what the heck happened? He said, I called up my assistant. I had this new idea after taking the X pill. I had this new idea, and I called her up, and I said, I'm going to give you my to-do list. You're going to take all the tasks, do whatever you can. Anything you can't do, put on my calendar just for that day, so I will only see a list of calendar items that I'll work my way through, and then I'm done with that day. And I will only have an agenda in the now, in that day. And she said, I've been waiting so long for you to say this. To-do list gone in a moment, quantum level, by taking that commitment, crossing that threshold. Jack himself took it. And he was there, he was so inspired by Arjuna that he said, I'm going to have a clean desk. And if you see a clean desk... <laughs> if you see Jack's desk, you'd think, there's no way. <laughs> but his people asked him, and they said, around him, we got the, the exercise going, and we asked him, why do you want that? Well, so that I can write more books, so I can be more organized. Why do you want to write more books? So I can get them more out in the world. Why do you want to get them out in the world? So I can feel loved. And he took it, and he said he felt high for three days after taking it because he felt so loved. Total breakthrough in emotion. Total breakthrough in commitment. So, I ask you, what would you take it for? What is something that you've been resisting? What is something that you deeply want? What is something you've been talking about for a long time? What is something that stayed on your to-do list forever? Or what is there something that you deeply want to experience and feel? If you've got a big chasm in front of you and you're going to jump over it, do you need the confidence to jump over it? Or will jumping over it give you the confidence? Either way, you're going to get to the other side. But it's either the emotion that we need and want to feel and experience or the commitment in that action. So now what I want you to do, we're, we're going to take a moment. And just you and the person next to you, share what would that be for you? What would that be for you? What is it that you really want? What is it you've been resisting? What is it maybe you want to let go of? How do you want to move forward? Where could you use a quantum leap in your life where if you had that now, it would change everything? So turn to the person next to you and share, what would that be? Okay. Now everybody, I'd like you to just, let's stand up and just shake it out a little bit.
you've been sitting a while, because what's going to be next is a lot of fun. Stand, shake it out. <laughs> you know, at Zappos, what we would do is anybody could call for what's called the three-minute dance party. Is that like in a call center, what we would do is just say for three minutes, like you could just put on a song, everybody goes crazy, and then you're just back to work. It was so much fun. We could try out the one minute dance party if you guys want to try that. Yeah? All right. Hold on one sec. So if you were 22 again, what would you do? The chance to start over, the chance to say, all right, this is what I'm doing now with my life. So who's, who's willing to share what their thing was from that exercise? Go ahead, right there. Do we have mics? All right, cool. Um, I want to lose 50 pounds. Ooh, awesome. Cool. Let's give him a round of applause. Cool. Who else? I want to make the, I have had Mary Kay business for three years. I want to make that first phone call. I want to make the first party so I can be a director by 20, June of 2017. Awesome. Back there. Uh, go back to law school and get my jurist doctor. Got it. Awesome. So you three people, are you willing to take a pill for it? Come on stage. <laughs> Let's give him a round of applause. All right. Let's make some magic happen. Okay. So here's what this is about. What we do, what we do with this, we're not just taking the pill fruit. This is the process, this is the ritual, and the witnessing and the power of the audience and having people there with you as well, is what we're going to first do is ask why, then we're going to really dial in the emotion, and then the words are going to ride on top of that. Cool? So, Sarah, yes. <laughs> tell us again about what you want. Um, I want to go back to school to go to law school to get my Juris Doctorate. Great. And why do you want um, it's something that I've, ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to do. And I now am an international human resources manager, and I work a lot in immigration. And so I think it's a way to go back and do something I really enjoy doing on a bigger sense. Great. And how would that feel to do this? It would be very difficult, but I think once I completed it, it would be pretty amazing. Yeah. What's that feel like in your body right now? I'm kind of shaking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What I've had, especially being uh, an experience as a speaker, is you start to reorient towards that feeling as it's not nervousness, it's not even panic. It's just pure, sheer excitement. 
right? Absolutely. Yeah. So what's the next step for that? Well, I guess I would have to take the Juris Doc or the entrance exam to get into law school, the LSATs. Got it. So next step is that. And what we like to think about this is for the movie of our lives, what is that next movie scene that we're going to see to know that you're doing this? Like, what are we going to, if we were watching the movie of your life and this is the scene, what would be the next scene that shows you're moving forward on this? Probably taking an LSAT prep class. Got it. Yeah. So what would be, so we, you've tapped in that excitement. When you feel the excitement and you know the next step, right? We've got the emotion, we've got the next step and that fear. And then what this is is crossing the threshold to get to that other side, to say, I'm doing it. So I'll ask you, are you ready to do it? Yes. Awesome. Give a round of applause. So now what you're going to do is you're going to say, by taking this X pill, I will, and then say what you're going to do. You can add a date by if you want to do that. that. That can happen. When you do, people do, it usually happens even faster. And just remember to feel all that excitement that, you've, that you're doing this for. Should it be like the next step or should it be the final goal? I think you can do both. Okay. By taking this pill, I will enroll in an LSAT class by spring of 2017. And by fall of 2017, I will have taken the LSAT. Awesome. Go for it. Well done. Congratulations. We've got it all on record now in front of everybody. Fabulous. Fabulous. <laughs> Nobody tell her husband. Okay, so you are Julie. Julie. Give a round of applause to Julie. So tell us about what you would like. I would like to be a Mary Kay director by the June of 2017. Got it. And so what would that give you? Uh, financial freedom and the ability to take care of my parents. Awesome. Awesome. And what does that mean to you to take care of your parents? Everything. Tell me more. Um, they've taken such good care of me, even in my adult life. I've been in and out of jobs, and they've always been there for me and my brother. So I just want to help them. And are you more dedicated towards getting this level that you talked about, or more dedicated to helping them? Helping my parents. So I can, I can feel that commitment. And this is one way that you're going to do it, but it might even show up in another way. Are you open to it showing up if it does in another way? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. And do you enjoy the Mary Kay work you're doing? Yes, I love the women I'm working with, and I like helping the idea of like, um, just empowering other women to step beyond their fears. Awesome. So you stepping beyond your fear and this movie for your life right now, what, what is your next movie scene? What are we going to see as the result of her taking on her fears and her commitment to this? Having my first party in over three years. Whoa, okay. Awesome. And in that movie, where are we seeing that? Is, that? is that at your house? Is that next month? Is that Give us a little more of that picture of the movie scene. I will have a party in the next week, and it will be at someone else's house. Wow. Awesome. How's that feel? Terrifying. Terrifying. <laughs> Do you feel committed? Yes. Awesome. All right. And that's what we call the activation because the pill is activated now. When the emotion's in alignment, the intention, it's clear, it's like there's, there's an activation of the pill. So, let me get you your water. So if you want, you can pr do a practice statement first, so you can say, by taking this X pill, I will, by taking this X pill, I will have a party within a week, and I will be able to take care of my parents and be a Mary Kay director by June of 2017. <laughs> How do you feel? Oh, yeah, what's your idea? Um, I have like six people I think I want to call. Wow. <laughs> It comes in fast. It, comes, it can come in fast. It can come in later during the day for all of you. Notice what new thoughts, new ideas, new emotions come up on that other side of the commitment. Because then it's like our minds say, okay, we're really doing this. Then, then I'm willing to be behind this. So more may be coming today as well. Awesome. Okay. 
Saved you for last, my man. <laughs> Joel, tell us about what this is about. I want to lose 50 pounds. Um, I've struggled with weight for, or at least I think I struggle with weight for most of my life. Um, I always say I'm going to do it, but when the alarm goes off in the morning, I'd rather just sleep. What does that feel like in that moment? Disappointing. It's like I'm not only leaving, letting myself down, but it, but the people in my life. And how painful is that for you? Very. And are you willing to let that go? Yes. Sounds like it's time. And what would you say you're you're letting go of? I think I'm just letting go of the barriers that keep me from doing it. Stop stop keeping myself from doing it. I think that's the biggest thing is I'm I'm being my own worst enemy. Yeah. Yeah. And how would it feel like to come here next year, fifty pounds lighter, felt, feeling great? What would that feel like? Fantastic. Uh most of you know I like to dance, and it'd probably be a little bit easier. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Very cool. So what would that statement be right now? What would it be for, to take the pill? You'd say, by taking this pill, I... By taking this pill, I will lose 50 pounds by April the 1st of 2017, and I will be dancing like crazy in Las Vegas with you guys. <laughs> Give him a round of applause. Beautiful. And I'd be willing to bet that you guys are thinking about something for yourselves right now. And as you know, that there's nothing in here, but it's about that, that commitment. So when you see these guys, remember that. Hold them to it. And see how you can help. See how you can be of support with them because this is a community. This is a group. It's a tribe. And we connect when we help each other achieve what is best for us and help each other strike at what's irrelevant out and focus on what's most important to what we want. Thank you guys. Yeah. So it's one thing to say we're going to do something. It's another to have it be an experience. It's another to make a commitment. It's another to have others around us who care. And so I ask you guys, what would it be for you? Has this, seeing this and seeing your peers here, who felt inspired by this? Yeah. So motivating, so inspiring. We've got about 90 days left in the year. 90 days till 2017. What, what is undone for you? What did you really want to accomplish this year? What did you want to let go of? I know not all of you would volunteer to be up here. And not all of you now have the chance to be up here. But I'm not going to leave you hanging. Because there are ways to do this that are with yourself, that are with others. And what's most amazing that we found is that it's not just a one-day thing. I, I take it every day and sometimes multiple times a day. Because it's not just for big goals. There's a lot of, as you'll find, I'm sure, a lot of micro goals in that. A lot of micro goals every day 
to shift, to feel something different, to let go of something, to say, I'm going to take on this task. And it blows my mind every time how well it can work. So one time I had this proposal I had to get done. And I said, by taking this pill, I will complete this proposal. And what's weird is sometimes the opposite happens. I immediately got dead tired. And rather than resist that tiredness, I went with it and I slept and I took a nap. And I woke up and I felt so refreshed and had a new idea. I got done in an hour what I thought was going to take me all day. But it was only on the other side of that pill that my unconscious mind, my body said, okay, what we need to get this done is to sleep. I did, and then usually I would take that kind of reaction and go have some coffee. But the act of taking the pill is kind of like saying, I'm willing to let go. I'm willing to see what happens. I'm willing to have fun with this. I'm willing to play with it. I know that we did some serious, heavy things, but as you'll see, and you know, you guys who were up here, come up with, uh, and talk to me afterward because I'm going to give you a bottle of 30 of these to work with it every day and keep experimenting and playing with those words and that intention. Oddly enough, I found it works like prayer for me too. Holly was having a, a, a bad day one time and it was something that, that, that she wasn't able to get through and I took it with the intention of supporting her and she didn't know it. And that day she felt so much better even though she'd been feeling bad for a little while. And we said, wow, maybe the power of prayer is in this as well. Like I said, this is pretty new. This is experimental of how we can use it. But the power of intention, the power of dialing in the feeling, the power of the why, and experimenting and playing with it every day is something I'm going to make available to you guys. To do this with a group, we have a Facebook group where we connect with a bunch of people who are also taking it and supporting each other. We do these live calls to, to do it and activate together. And there's no dogma. There's no thing to follow. It's all you. This is you in a pill. So if that's something that interests you, I'm going to be in the back, and I'll share with you um, how, how you can do that with us together. I'd love to talk to you about that. would love to have you as part of our tribe who's making this happen every day. Imagine these kind of breakthroughs that you can have every day. So please come up to me, and I will be happy to tell you about that and how you can play with us together. But until then, I hope you, you take away from this a few things. One is that those things that we tend to call negative like anxiety, maybe they're our friends. Maybe they're actually taking us somewhere that we want to be. And it's our resistance, our calling that bad, that makes it hard to deal with. Second is that we can have things a lot faster than we realize when we're fully committed and in. It can happen at quantum rates. And finally, know that no matter how many books there are, speeches, etc., it's experiences that change us. It's experiences that will shift our lives. So keep finding new experiences. Keep finding ways to experiment and play. And if you really want to have fun, do that to experiment with giving experiences to others. The way we actually design the, the, the way to give you the pill is to give you um, two bottles so that you can do it with somebody else and have fun with them and play with it. So this is something that, that I wouldn't have uh, regularly done, but it's such an amazing opportunity to bring this new invention to you guys, a group of, of incredibly passionate, devoted people. It's a true honor to be a, a Toya Award recipient. And I'm excited to keep playing with you guys throughout the weekend. Thank you for having me.